he needed to fill in these four bars or whatever, he did that. As we moved along in these tours, Tupac got to be known as the, what's up with him? You know, what are you, what are you gonna do with him? To not include Pac on something would have been dumb. So mm. we gave him eight bars of the same song. This. Tupac, go ahead and rock. Now I climb around when I hang around with my underground. Girls used to frown, say I'm down when I come around. Gas me or when they pass me, they used to kiss me. Harass me, but now they ask me if they can kiss me. Kiss the fame, people change, want to live their life. I'm saying it's all kind of wrong if I feel that life's got. Playing the flame must have changed, not a week of change for all. I don't mean it's still the same. The nose. <laughs> The Humpty Hump nose. Uh, oh, shit. Tupac. But Tupac didn't like to play second position to anyone or anything, so it was always temporary. We always knew that. This underground was a little too spring break for what he was doing, and what he was doing was a little too political for this underground. We, we understood he was a political MC first, you know, a social critic MC first. He wasn't content with just being a part of something if it wasn't the way that he wanted it to be. So, you know, it was always known that Tupac was gonna have his thing. Pac wanted to have his own career because he was so creative and we were all seeing it early. The need to express himself. He mm -hmm. was one of them artists. Oh, I need to drop this shit tonight. I need to get this off my chest. This is a <laughs> form of therapy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we all knew that he needed his own outlet. <laughs> To, to let that out. For Tupacalypse now, with the help of Shock and others, we, we got together the best group of tracks we could at the time. He had some early success with Brenda's Got a Baby. Brenda's got a baby, but Brenda's barely got a break. A dead shake, the girl can hardly spell a name. Brenda's Got a Baby spoke to issues that, that we hadn't heard before. To write women's anthems and not be a woman is, you know, impossible until Tupac. Nobody talks about that. No no young black males, no black males talk about um, black females like we should. We need to take more responsibilities for our sisters because we know who will. When he says she uh. didn't know what to throw away or what to keep. She didn't know what to throw away and what to keep. It says so much about being a teenage black girl who finds herself uncomfortably pregnant. And it was him, a guy, that wrote that. It's one of the best lines of poetry, of rap lyrics, of literature. <laughs> What would you say Tupac's legacy is in the Bay? I feel like he's probably the greatest rapper that's ever graced this area. I was blown away from the first time I ever heard him, really. Um, it just got better and better and then intelligent and then smart and then just outstanding and just remarkable and awesome. You know, it just kept moving forward. Tupac's legacy is forever connected to the Bay. It will always be where Tupac found his voice. You come to the Bay and talk bad about Pac. I mean, it's not a joke. People really loved that brother. They really 100% loved him. And they loved him because, like, you know, he represented a people that were forgotten. Tupac was so many things, which made him human and real and compelling. And Oakland adopted him, and he adopted us. The Bay Epic has got a whole new revolution of music that's coming out. And they're not taking nobody else's stab. So I give all my love to Oakland. If I'm going to claim somewhere, I'm going to claim Oakland. <laughs>